As many of you know, my passion is in working with the ultra high net worth space. I've spent the majority of my career in business development and marketing around the ultra high net worth investor community. And within that specifically, I have a lot of expertise and passion around the family office space. Family offices are a booming industry and many wealth managers are looking to embark on it. Our firm has worked with many wealth management firms go to market with family office services. But what exactly are family offices? What do they do that's different than a wealth management firm? Can anyone just call themselves a family office? Or are there legal restrictions to being a family office? Why would someone hire a family office? How do family offices charge? All of those are going to be answered in this video where I have the great pleasure of having one of my top resources in the family office space join me. Ron Geffner from Sadis and Goldberg, a full practice law firm based in New York City, is going to join me and talk about all of these questions that I had and answer them for you. So with that, let's get started. First, thanks for having me and I'm enjoying my time with you from earlier today as well as now. Yes. So um, I started my career at the SEC. I was, in 1991, I was recruited by the SEC and I was in the enforcement division in New York where I focused on prosecuting asset managers. This was before Madoff, before most people, um, before many of the people showed an interest in this field. And from the SEC, I went over to Price Waterhouse where I, I worked on mock reviews and a range of other services. And from there, I went to a large law firm. And then ultimately, in 1997, I helped found Sadis and Goldberg. And to answer the question... Of which, where do you see the future of the wealth management space? If you had to you know, predict, based on the trends you're seeing, uh, where do you see it going? So there's, there's two components. There's some stuff that's going to be commoditized, and there's some stuff that won't. And what that is or isn't, hard to address. Uh, uh, a client of mine who I've had a 15, 20 year relationship with who um, made a comment to me once. Uh, his name is Greg and Greg made a comment. Anything that could be replaced by technology will. So years ago, there was a rumor that Google was going to set up an asset manager, but basically based on AI. And that could have been the death knell because the idea is if your costs are fixed, basically, or, or closer to fixed than paying salaried employees who might leave you you can then lower your cost of providing the service and you can really garner market share. So now with chat GBT and, and AI constantly in the news, it goes through my head is there are already robo advisors and people using AI and um, black boxes and gray boxes for uh, algorithmic trading. But with the development of AI, how much of the wealth management industry is going to get whittled down so the people that are really good at business development because AI is not going down the business development model. Right. When's the last time you had coffee with a computer that wasn't your own? Exactly. That's where so, we with the yeah. sales uh, strategies and so forth. So I would say different articles that I've been reading or shows I've been watching talk about the soft skills as going to become more important, meaning our ability to communicate and develop meaningful relationships with one another. Um, but that would, I would say in my mind, that's probably the biggest area of risk. It, it's a great tool if you're an owner and you're, you've really done a great job of raising assets, but if you're starting out, it also lowers the playing field too. Make, make the barrier to entry can be far lower with regard to access to AI. So it can cut a lot of different ways. And I don't think it's going to be only cutting one way. I think it's going to depend on facts and circumstances to a range of different, um, services. It's an imperfect world. You know, Murphy's laws, shockingly, however long ago they were created, still apply. What can go wrong will go wrong. In your terms, what is a family office and how is it different than a typical wealth management firm? So family office tends to focus on managing their own assets. There are many firms that define it by virtue of the assets that a family has. Um, numbers could start at 50 million or higher. And that would be a family office. A multifamily office would be when the family, who then starts to incur expenses maybe, 
meaning they bring in a portfolio manager, they bring in a trader or an analyst or other services, realizes, well, now I'm incurring carrying costs of uh, um, a fixed or floating fee. Let's say it was a million dollars or more. Say, well, look, I might be able to lower my costs by charging for their services to other similarly situated families. And so then they might backdoor back into the asset management industry by becoming a multifamily office. What are you seeing as some of the full services within a family office, uh, especially in the single family offices that those folks have? It could be accounting. It could be the bill paying concierge service. It could be education for other family members. Um, Governance. Pretty- Seen. Sometimes, sometimes I have to deal with how one invests their money. Sometimes I have to deal with the operations of the family office, and sometimes I have to deal with a range of even entertainment services for the family office, like concierge trips. So it really runs the full gamut. So yeah. what I find is many family offices will invest in the things that they understand. How did they get to their wealth? So if they had operating businesses and sold them, they may then have a better understanding of how to go about acquiring other businesses and rolling them up and and selling them off or taking them public. Many of the family offices we've dealt with invest in real estate. So we're working with them on the relationships with their employees or or members of the family office, but who are not blood lineage relatives to um, relationships with their counterparties that they are using to help them execute and operate these real estate related investments. If a, if a traditional wealth manager or wealth management firm wanted to add um, a family office division to its practice, are there any legal um, areas they should be aware of? Um- sure. So first and foremost, the best way to start the conversations, understanding their um, goal or method for monetizing the services, meaning what are you charging for? What service? How are you planning on charging it? So regulations kick in, at least from my perspective, um, given my background, is are they going to, do they intend to act like a broker dealer? I've met many people that claim to be part of a family office. They have a deal and they're trying to attract other investors. And within the family office, they're compensating people who are not with a broker dealer do not have a series seven with a commission. Obviously that violates the law too. If if you are managing, providing advisory services or wealth management services to other people outside the family, you might have to, you need to evaluate and assess whether you have to register as an investment advisor. If you're not dealing with securities and you're dealing with commodities or futures, it would be the same thing under the Commodity Exchange Act, whether you have to consider registration as a commodity trading advisor, or if you set up a fund, a commodity pool operator. So the the overview, to just to go back a half step, would be determine whether you're engaging in a service or pro- contemplating providing a service that's broker-dealer, investment advisor, or commodity-related, because those have very clear guidelines on registration requirements. A lot of wealth management firms just slap on the name family office uh, on their company name. Are there specific restrictions on who is allowed to call themselves a family office? Because from what you're saying, it needs to be a full service. uh, Or can anyone just call themselves a family office? I don't know of a specific um, accepted place that would define what a family office is. It's, it's like saying he or she makes a lot of money. Like, who's the arbiter of a lot? Yeah. Is $100,000 a lot? It is to many people. So it. I think with family office, same thing with hedge fund. Hedge fund is not really a defined term. There are different organizations that will try and put their uh, fingerprint on it and provide a definition for the term, for the basis of having an intelligent conversation. But if you can't define what a family office is. It gives greater latitude. Now, some places, as I said, I'll give you an example. I know Ernst & Young has a family office practice, and my understanding is they only take family offices with half a billion or greater in assets as clients. Now, at first, my information may be incorrect, or maybe it changed since I'd last heard it, but the point is they created their own definition. So when you hear, uh, think about it this way, when um, crypto is hot, 
as opposed to the crypto winter we lived in. Think about how many, there's a handful of public companies that added the word crypto or some or blockchain to their name. And, and my memory was some of those stocks took off at least temporarily. Mm. Who's to say whether that's accurate or not? I understand depending on how deep one goes, it can be very misleading. Well, Ron, this was a fascinating conversation. I could go on and on talking about the ultra high net worth and family office space, which is, again, as I said, my passion, but it sounds like yours as well. For anyone who would be interested in speaking with Ron, I am going to hyperlink his bio below so you could reach out to him directly. And Ron, I hope you come back for our video channel pretty soon. Wait, we're not doing this again tomorrow? Is that what you're <laughs>